Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's uh, Boys from the Baltic Star. Tonight there are only two boys, which is great because I can stretch out the little footer at the bottom and make it a little bit longer without uh, losing <laughs> Beth, which is which is a lovely treat. Um, thank you for joining us this evening on this Thursday. You will notice there's only two boys this evening because um, we are we've been pushed out of the nest by Ben. He's taken off our learning wheels from our bicycle he's let go of the back as we're pedaling furiously like making him promise that he's still holding on oh i'm holding on i'm holding on and then he's let us go and so uh with a bit of uh, jiggery pokery and some computer skills we're here for you this evening and thank you so much for joining us it's a pleasure um the app on my phone no longer says how many people are viewing but leno's here at least so i know you're here hello um yeah. I'm Luke. I'm in the red. Oh, I've gone red and blue. So I quite like the red and blue, and it kind of fits because I'm the I'm the orange on the page, and you're the purple. So it's, that is true. It's, that's good. Ahoy, hoy, Lena. Um, so I'm Luke. Um, thank you. But that's all I've got to say. And and with me is my brother in arms, my fellow citizen, the man who I would make any village with. It is Ewan. Good evening, Ewan. Uh, good evening, Luke. It'll be a good village, to be fair. It would be a good village. It might be quite niche. For a week. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be very ideological for a week. And then and then no one would have any bread. As we're about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It'll start so beautifully. Um, so, tonight we're playing uh, The Quiet Year. While Ben's away, uh, today and tomorrow, you and I decided that we'd each sort of pick something and run it through Thursday and Friday. Uh, this was my pick. And tomorrow is Ewan's pick, which we'll talk about at the end, and you can come back for tomorrow. So that's an exciting little thing, but we're not going to talk about it now, because tonight we're talking about The Quiet Year, which is a game, a map-drawing game. There is a, I PDF'd it, and then bound it. Oh, I just want to shove my binding. Ooh. Really professionally. Really nice, right? Says, oh, I yeah. loved it. Um, it's designed and written by Avery Alder. Uh, first released in 2013, this one's 2019, with illustrations from Ariel Norris. Um, some special thanks that's done to them. It is not many pages, it's 15 A4 pages, of which four of them are to tell you what playing cards stand for, if you get the PDF version rather than the printed version. So there's not many rules, it's in nice, big writing. Um, what we're going to do is, what we thought is, we're going to play the game through this evening, we're going to build a village. We're not playing the full 52 weeks. There is what's called a fleeting year, because that's four hours. We're playing what's called a fleeting year. Um, at Ewan's request this afternoon, he was quite quite certain about it. He's got work tomorrow, bless him. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> where um, instead we've taken out uh, 20 cards, uh, five from each season, because you play a deck like a super season. So we've taken out five cards per season. So it's a 32-week year. Like, like like my old teaching days, a 32-week year. And um, so we're going to play through that, and we'll explain how it works as we go. Rather, cause we, part of the rule is telling uh, the rules you, at the start, but rather than dumping everything on you, we thought we would read up how it works, set, set our uh, village up, and then as we go through it for the first couple of weeks, we'll sort of explain what we do in each step so you sort of understand. You are more than welcome, all of you, to throw in uh, suggestions in the chat. There are quite... Oh, thank you, Fiddles. Thank you for the subscription. Good evening. Um, Excellent. There are... Tooge! Um, there are... Um, oh, God, I've lost what I was going to say now. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm so lost. So lost in Fiddles. Something about rules. There are rules. There are rules. Um, there are rules. There are rules. Um, but also there are, um, when it comes to me and you in discussing about the village, what we're going to do, there are very specific rules about when we can discuss and how we can discuss. But that doesn't stop you guys from throwing out ideas and uh, messing with our heads. It's just you and I that have to worry about it. But we'll go into that as we fulfil the rules. So um, are you excited, you? And you, you seemed apprehensive earlier. I'm very, no, I'm very excited. It's good. It's a little bit, you know, my drawing is terrible as... Uh, in fact, both Mr. Leno and Sox will attest to. We played a bit of Scribble, scribble I.O. the other evening, and I can't draw, especially, <laughs> especially with a mouse. But oh. here we are. 
it's going to be fun. Here we are with I'm them. excited to see what kind of community we come up with. I'm excited as well, actually. We're, we're using something called uh, Draw Dot <clears throat> Chat uh, Virtual Classroom, and um, it's done so both of us can draw at the same time. You are viewing from Ewan's. Ewan's very quiet. Yeah, I thought it might be. Hang on. Try. Talk a bit more, Ewan. About now. About now. Is that better? Or now. Well, maybe now. I might have to be talking for like 20 seconds because there might be a bit of a twitch delay. Ah, cool. So Fantastic. I'll just talk about the 20 seconds. <laughs> no, I haven't said anything. I'm just going to carry on talking. No, Leno likes it. So that's good. <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Leno. So we're using the shared whiteboard. You are viewing it from Ewan's point of view. Um, Ewan is the purple square. I am the red square. It sort of matches our colours somewhat. Um, so basically, when we draw on the whiteboard, we can zoom in and out a bit. We can move around a bit. And uh, yeah, so you're seeing Ewan's cursor, but my cursor will be mm -hmm. doing things in my own time. So anyway, should we introduce it? And should we get our first little bit started? And we can yeah. sort of go as we go. Sounds good. So I, the rule is I have to read this out, and then you and I are apparently supposed to share out the reading after. We'll see how that goes. So this, everyone, <laughs> is a map drawing game. Together we play as a community rebuilding after the collapse of civilization. It's, it's very uh, topical, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, your decisions will define the values and future of this community, and these decisions will be added to a map which is constantly evolving. This map blends literal cartography, that's, uh, that's pushing it, with, sim <laughs> with symbols, creating a rich visual record of land and people. We collaborate to steer the fate of the community while introducing problems and tensions along the way. Right, so we're playing the short version. So we're going to start with uh, literal cartography and actual peril. We do get to choose what we've got a lot of. We could just choose peril. What are we, <laughs> what are we abundant in, peril? Uh, yeah, that's Too not gonna help, it's not gonna help the kid. It's not gonna help the kids eat. Uh, well, that's just what we got. <laughs> oh, lots of lockers. Um, so, chapter two, survey. For a long time, we were at war with the jackals. Now, finally, we've driven them off, and we're left with this: a year of relative peace, one quiet year with which to build our community up and learn again how to work together. Come winter, the frost shepherds will arrive and we might not survive the encounter. This is when the game will end. But we don't know about that yet. What we know is that right now, in this moment, there's an opportunity to build something. Let's go over our game components. This is our map. I'm pointing at the screen. This is our map. Um, <laughs> before playing, we're going to establish some of the landscape. As we play, we'll update the map to reflect new discoveries, conflicts and decisions. The map will blend literal cartography, again, with symbols. <laughs> we won't write words on it. We kind of will because we're going to use it to track things as well, because otherwise you have to lay cards out, so you will see some words come in. But, um, common symbols are fine. We will take turns drawing on the map. This is important for you, and You don't have to worry about drawing well. Every, every drawing is good enough. I like it. Ah, every drawing is good enough. Um, you are good enough, Ewan. Thanks. Thanks. I feel validated. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. That's what we like about this channel. Um, <coughs> I'm going to point to the term summary card and no. There's a card that explains how it works from week to week. We'll go over that each turn so you guys understand for the first couple of uh, rounds. Um, there are some uh, numbers which will go up, which we'll talk about. Uh, there's some contempt, which we'll talk about if we get there. Ewan's very excited about contempt. I think it's his favourite um, mechanic of the game. Well, yeah, I think I'm going to use it in every... I'm going to use a dice to represent my contempt in every single game we play from now on, regardless <laughs> of whether it's this or Traveller or anything else. Basically, if someone makes a decision you're not happy with, you just gain a point of contempt just against the other, <laughs> <laughs> against the other person. I just wanted to use it down the pub. So, <laughs> strong contempt. And then we've got a deck of cards, which is here, which is uh, pre-shuffled. Um... This is our quiet year. Each suit is a season. Uh, so we go through uh, spring, which is hearts, then the diamonds for summer. Just check it's hearts at the top, yep. Then it goes to clubs for autumn and spades for winter. When the king of spades is drawn, that's when the frost shepherds arrive and the game ends immediately. So um, we might not get the full year. They might arrive early in the winter, they might arrive late in the winter. Contempt. 
contempt. Um, so, the decks are shuffled. They've been set up already. Five cards of each have been taken out. Yes, exactly. What will happen is, I will turn a card over, and then whoever's turn it is, will, Ewan's got a copy of the rules as well. Whoever's turn it is will read out what happens that week. And they're sort of the head of the game for that little bit. So when we play The Quiet Year, we don't control specific characters or act out scenes. Instead, we all act as abstract social force. I've always felt like an abstract social force, you, and I don't know about you. <laughs> it's our niche, isn't it? <laughs> it is our niche. It's what we do. But we're abstract social forces within the community. I love it. That's my new job title. <laughs> abstract social force. <gasps> that guy on Twitter today asked, what's people's dream job? I should have said, <laughs> I want to be an abstract social force within the community. <laughs> <laughs> oh no what, what we're, we've got an abundance of Brexit um, <laughs> this is a story about social forces and their impact on the land rather than about specific individuals at, at the same time we're also playing as the community we're looking for opportunities to introduce new and interesting challenges into our story it's our job to make sure there are always difficult decisions to be made so we can't play it easy sometimes we've got to make it hard sometimes we, we might throw it open to the floor to see if someone's got anything interesting to come up especially if we get stuck um, and we sort of tensions will come up. We we address them together, which will reveal the character and future of our community, and probably something of our psyche. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck into that. I, I read this as sketchy terrain, but sketching terrain, or that could be sketchy. Uh, before the first week of play, so week zero, if it were, we're going to establish, which we'll do now. We're going to establish a general landscape for our map. This. We'll begin with a brief discussion, two minutes at most, about the general terrain and habitat. This can be simple as someone saying, how about a community in a rocky desert? And everyone else nodding in agreement. Once we agree, each of us introduces one detail about the local terrain and sketches it onto the map. These sketches should be rough and simple, leaving lots of blank space for additions during play. The community itself should be fairly large on the map, taking up one third of the sheet. Um, usually, the community has around 60 to 80 members. So we need to decide on the general terrain and then we're each going to add a detail to the map. Oh, oh look. Oh, a seaside. Seasides are often by the rim of an active volcano. <laughs> what do you think, Ewan, in our <laughs> top of sun? Balanced oh, on man. I mean, that is abstract. To be fair. <laughs> I want to be an abstract social force. <laughs> where, where are we going to be in our post-apocalyptic world, Ewan? Oh, I quite, I quite like the, uh, I quite like the volcano idea. Maybe not on the rim. <laughs> I'm open to other suggestions. Bournemouth is pretty close to that sort of peril. But <laughs> by the rim of vol volcano does add some peril. I quite like it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Should we add a volcano in a in a top corner then? It's not part of the main map, but at least it shows us where we need to be, I guess. Yeah. 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 Do it. Yeah, right, so look. I'm, am I more zoomed in than you? Yeah, I am. Right, let's go. What colour should this volcano be? Let's make it a brownie colour. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Yes. Yes. Let's go here. Yeah, ready? Let's go. Here's the volcano. Can people see that? I can. Can you see that? That's something like that. Then let's make it active. So we need <laughs> some so we need some lava in there. Okay. Let's do little sparks off it to show that it's active. How's that looking? Oh That's that, pretty good. that looks well, perilous. Okay. I like it. So we are near an active volcano. Um <laughs> Pompey, as in Pompeii, or oh, by Portsmouth. <laughs> I like it. Yes, it's very good. I didn't read above. Right. Um, so I guess you need to draw our little village in the middle, you, and to show where we are, and then we add some bits to it. It doesn't need to be major. A couple of houses or tents will suffice. Oh, wonderful. Uh... <laughs> some yurts. Oh, I like it. Oh, I, that's, I like it. Yes. 
There we go. That's us. Either it's teepees or a bunch of hipsters that are just trying to reconnect with themselves. <laughs> oh. Uh, good redemption, Ali. That means this needs to come into play. Oh, we stand. We stand for you. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Ali. <laughs> Oh, um, so we each need to pick something that will be on the map to start with. Um, general terrain, and we do it without discussion, really. Uh, Ewan, add something to the map and tell us what you're adding to the map. Do you not have to guess? Would that not be more amusing? <laughs> yeah, actually do it and then tell us at the end. Everyone have a guess. <laughs> See what his artistic skills are. <sighs> Come on, Tony Hart. Go on then, go on then, go on then. Is it another, is it another volcano? It's <laughs> a dual volcano. <laughs> Double caught between the, and the volcanoes. <laughs> no, it is not another volcano. <sighs> it is, in fact, going to be a big cliff into a ravine. <sighs> oh. Cliff! So we've got a cliff to one corner, a volcano to the other. I like it. Uh, I'm going to add... Where should I go? I'm going to go here. I'm going to add something over here. I'm going to add... Um, I'm still in red. It's not good. <laughs> Everything in red. Everything in red. Everything's dangerous. To represent the peril. <laughs> no, I, the more red, the more peril. Over here is A because it's post apocalyptic, and what this is is an old broken down, it's the only building left standing that we know near us. It's like an old cheese factory, but it's deserted, it's long broken down. It used to make nice. cheese down there. So there's a long deserted cheese factory to the south, a ravine to the south, east. Did I did I tell you about that cheese that I bought that used to be made at the bottom of an active volcano? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It was here. It was here all along. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So we've started what our terrain is. Now, each of us are going to name an important resource for the community. There's going to be one each. Um, we're going to have, when we've had a discussion, when we've each picked one, uh, one will be in abundance, so we've got plenty of it, and the other will be... Um, scarce so we're going to have a shortage of it so there'll be other things we have but there's a focus on one there's an abundance one there's a scarcity um abundance and scarcity any ideas you and <laughs> i think one of our resources should be like uh, wood, wood, dried, dried out like petrified wood from all the heat from the volcano. Ah. And I think the other thing, or not, sh the other thing should be shoes. Shoes are very important when you're travelling over hot ground. That is true. That's true. Now we've got to decide what we're abundant in and what we're sh what we're scarce in. Wood and shoes. Which is more interesting. Which is more interesting. We need an abundance of one. First call in the chat, we'll go that way. So shoes or wood. What are we scarce in? What are we abundant in? Shoes abundant. Okay. There we so, go. So I'm going to draw some shoes. Um, let's go for some nice... Uh, Bright red. No, red. Let's go for some pink shoes. And we're going to do them near the camp. Do, do, do. We'll do some high heels. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some boots. There we go. Some boots. 
that means, and I'll do some pluses, that means we've got lots of boots. There we go. In our village. Lots of kinky boots, kinky boots. And then you, and you need to show somehow how we've got no wood. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I will draw a very crude wood store with no wood in it. Oh, it's empty. It's all empty. It's, fact, all... it's, probably, it's probably not even made out of wood. I don't know what it's made out of. <laughs> Some sort of tin. Oh, no wood in it's our wood store. There. It's so empty. It is. The volcano's burnt all the wood down. It's just... It petrified and then it crumbled in our hands. We took what we could, we turned what we could into clogs and then the rest just crumbled away. <laughs> it's quite sad, really. Okay, so we are in a, uh, a TP village by a volcano near a cliff ravine. There's an abandoned, broken down cheese factory to the south. We have many clogs, far too many clogs than ever we'd need, but no <laughs> wood. Uh, the clogs made out of wood? They were, and that's. But we then we covered them in things, so you can't use them for burning anymore because we went a bit too hoity-toity. Mm. Too much painting and sort of, you know, we've ruined it for in the name of fashion. Okay, chapter three, play. So here is our village to start with. We're going to play now. Um, each week in the year is taken by one player, and it's going to move clockwise. The other players are quiet audience members and less prompted otherwise weeks should only take a couple of minutes so we should start hammering through things a lot quicker now each week we're going to play three phases uh i'll draw a card and on you and turn he'll read it out and on my turn i'll read it out there's an and or or um then we have to there'll be projects that we're working on and we need to reduce the number of weeks left to complete the project by one and then uh, that person will take an action. It's one of three things which we'll talk about when we get there. So Ewan, I think you should go first. You seem like the man for the job. I'll so my uh, oracle. oracle. The oracle, yes. your heart oracle. So That's these cards. Right so these cards have two options to choose from. Mostly, I'm going to draw a card. Ewan's going to read the one that he finds most interesting or fitting, and then he's going to do what it says. I have no say in it. And you and it is the uh, seven of hearts. A lucky seven start. Some good choices. Um, I'm also trying to keep an eye. Oh, God. Uh, right. <laughs> what natural predators roam this area? Oh. Are you safe? I'm really tempted to go with steam-powered robots. Steam-powered, do it. But they sort of claimed their own self-knowledge. Yeah. That have stolen the wood and roam the area free. Oh, no. I forget who it was that actually drew a robot during a scribble I.O. I could do with a bit of help. <laughs> they do look upon the wooden clogs because they just don't fit their stumpy robot feet things and they don't want us to have them if they can't have them why should we i like it stumpy <laughs> with the feet, with the feet. Yeah. what happens if you zoom in one click you know because you're zoomed out on my view uh, let's have a look how is it too zoomed in yeah, a little bit. Sorry, you have to zoom out again. That's all right. That's all right. Apologies. Sorry. We're working with different screen sizes, so. Uh... Okay. So you've got robots, okay? Yeah. Roaming for it. Uh, I don't think we do feel safe with the steam-powered robots around. They're evil. I think we're scared of invasion by steam-powered robots. Okay. So now Ewan has decided that they're steam-powered robots. He's going to choose one of three things. And I'm reading this through for you guys because Ewan knows. He's either going to discover something new so he can announce something that we find. That's part of the story. It can be anything, really, and then draw it on there. Or he can have a discussion with me. And that way um, he can do a question or a statement 
And if it's a question, we each get to answer it once. If he makes a statement, I'm allowed to say one thing back in return. And that is all we can do. It's soft to get a vibe of what's, what we believe. Or he can start a project where um, he can choose a situa situation, declare what we're going to start building or working on or working towards. And then we decide how many weeks it's going to take us between one and six. So there's a lot of self-led thinking, I guess. Okay, so I've got to shut up now. Um, I am going to, uh, I think we should start a project. <coughs> I think we, the people in the village are hot, they're thirsty, they know the steam powered robots out there, um, they're going to try and build a well. Nice. To see if they can uh, get down deep enough to find some water. There's got to be water around somewhere, right? Otherwise, how are the robots making steam? Oh, for sure. Okay. How many weeks do we think it would take to build a well? <laughs> Near an axe of <laughs> it's, it's got to be a few, innit? It's got to be more than a couple. Yeah, I was thinking three. I'll go, for, I'll go for that. Um, so the way that people generally track it is by writing it on a card, uh, everyone. We don't, we're not using cards, we're using a screen. So what we decide instead is we're going to type it up to the side and then sort of track it as we go. And then when it's complete, Ewan gets to build it onto the map because it's his decision. Wonderful. Oh, do you want me to type it out? Yeah. Yeah. Well, three. Nice. Cool. And that is the end of a whole turn. Now, if I thought that um, Ewan didn't honour me in that decision making, or th I thought that he sort of went wrong with how many weeks it would take, I could take contempt that I've got contempt at him. But I thought he was cool. I'm happy with him. I think um, he's friendly and lovely. Um, we can change abundance and scarcity if something comes. If we get water, for example, we might become abundant in water. But, you know, we don't at the minute. So I'd say that our abundance and our scarcity stays the same. Would you agree, Ewan, at this point? Yeah, I think so. Nice. And then it's on to uh, week two, which is me. I'll talk us through one more time and then I guess we'll speed up after that. So I've got to turn a card over, which is the four of hearts. I'm going to read up the four of hearts. Uh, hopefully it's nothing to do with the robots. <clears throat> They're a bit close. You drew them a bit close for my liking. Uh, now, I'm looking at where we're storing our food. Where are we storing our food? And why is this a risky place to store things? So. I think that we are storing the food. We're worried about the heat of the volcano. It's a very hot place. So the best place for us to store our food, I'm gonna draw some apples, which are red, I know. No, this is green apples, because they're not perilous. Mm. We've got to store them as far away from the volcano as possible, which means a walk, but we've got to keep them cool. So we're storing them over here by the uh, edge of the ravine. But of course the danger is that it's risky going there. It's, a, it's in a stash by the edge, there's rock falls, you know, bits break away from time to time. So it's always a slightly risky journey for people to have to go and uh, pick up the, the food supplies. That's my, that's my thinking on it. And it's a very long way by the looks of it as well. And then um, the next step, Ewan gets to cut down the well by one. Oh, yes. Okay. See how that works. Nah, that's pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks. <laughs> and for my third choice, which is um, a project, a discussion, or a discovery, uh, we could discover something. In our wanderings around to and fro from the um, the, the food supplies, 
Uh, one day, one of our elders goes off track a little bit and discovers some... Um, if I can get the right colour. He discovers a really mysterious um, so let's go over here, set of like a, a boggy PT marshes. They're just there's a really bad vibe about them. We don't sort of quite know, and there seems to be, you know, like the old American tar pits where they say like animals, the sort of the remains of animals are. Nice. Yeah. So over here, there's sort of just this horrible sort of watch your foot, you're in trouble kind of thing. So that's what we found over there. Some mysterious peaty, boggy areas. <laughs> okay. And that's uh, that's my turn over. Must be Ewan for week three. Wonderful. It's a, <clears throat> no, a nine of hearts. I think a charismatic young girl convinces many people to help her with an elaborate scheme. Uh, and I think this young girl is more petrified than most at the thoughts of the wandering robots. Um, so she is going to start a project to build a robot trap. A robot trap. On the trap. outskirts of, like a giant pitfall trap on the outskirts of uh, our settlement. Like it. Uh, but I think this is quite an endeavour. They are terrifying robots. You can't just do a hole with some st sticks in it. Well, we can't. We've got no wood to do a stick trap. Well, uh, exactly. How many are thinking? It's got to be more. Perhaps lava filled. Oh, oh that's, good. that's an effort to get it there, isn't it? It's got to be like four, <laughs> that's going to be like five, four or five weeks, isn't it? Then yeah, let's go five. Oh. It does say an elaborate scheme. So <laughs> we'll go with that. And you get to cut down your well though to one week. That is true. Was that um, the plan part of that turn, or was it the end of your turn? Uh, oh, no, the start of Project to Reflect is on the card. Oh, nice. Uh, so I think for my turn, I will ask a question of the community. Okay. Uh, I think the community is going to be discussing whether it's worth keeping <clears throat> our abundance of wooden clogs um, if that's what the robots are after to power their steam engines. <laughs> do we keep them or do we get rid of them? Uh, my, my answer, we each get to do an answer now, don't we? Um, mm. My answer will be it would be a real shame to lose our kinky clogs. Um, but if they do, I want them to be used for good and not just cast asunder. <laughs> not evil. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say on the matter with two sentences. How about you, Ewan? It's tempting to discard them. Um, but also I think they could, they could work as good bait for a robot trap. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> See, Leno's right. Yeah, just give a robot a clog. That is very true. Just got to keep feeding the robot so it sort of likes us, but <clears throat> not, but not too much. Okay, that's the end of week three. Week four, six of hearts is um. Ah, oh. oh, that's a good one. That's a good question. Um, I'm 
having a bit of a think now. Okay. I'm going to go with... Oh, I'm torn between it. I'm sorry, everyone. This is really bad viewing, but I'm actually really torn between it. So really, <laughs> it's 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 two ends of the age range, basically. They're both really interesting points. Um, that's a bit child slavery. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Um, are there children in the community? Uh, yes, there are. Well, we know there's a smart girl already that sort of came up with the idea for the robot trap. And the second bit is, if there are, what is their role in the community? So there are children in the community. Um, their role is um, basically at night in a, in a bad attempt to scare off robots. We don't have a trap for them, so we're just trying to scare them off. Their role is, because they're quick and nimble, is we light fires along the, the, northern, the northern side of the village. And what the children do is they light fires at different points to try and confuse and lure the robots away. Sort of in the night and try and give them the run around a bit and sort of, you know, draw their eyes to it. So the children are constantly like running around in the dark, putting out fires, starting new fires. It's a dangerous thing, but they're the quick and nimble ones, sadly. We do have a village of arsonist children. That is their mm. role. But write it down. Arsonist children. All right. <laughs> I think we should draw some little fires on the map. Should I draw some little fires? Yes. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. To represent their arson. Rep represent the arson. And there we go. Do some little fires here. Little fires here. Oh, that's a big fire. Little fire here. <laughs> that's that's the main fire. And even up here. What I'll do is I'll do a little. Look at the little kiddies there. Starting the fires. Little scamps. Little cheeky, cheeky little scamps. Okay. They love it. They love it. They're obsessed <laughs> with fire. Because of the volcano, they're all obsessed with fire from a young age. There we go. Our little arsonist children setting fires to lure away the robots, if possible. So that is that. Um, at this point, we, uh, which I think I have the power to do, although you're zoomed out for me. Hang on. Let's. Oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot about that. That's the, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the text not being on the screen, Jordan, is it? Yeah, could you rub out the. So you're going to complete. We're going to complete the well, which oh, you yeah. which you and will get to draw in. Uh, robot dog pets, or like um, canine. Oh no! That's down to four. So that's down to four. And what for my choice? I'm going to start a. I want us to start a new project. Um, it says you can start a new project, but it might need to be done in batches. I've got an overall vision of bringing, um, making use an easier use to get the lava down to the village for use in defence or fires or whatever. So, uh, but I think the first thing we need to do is go to that abandoned cheese building and rip it apart for metal, pipes, tubes, anything we can use to bring lava down. Uh, could you please write under robot trap? Could you please write strip factory, please, Ewan? Yes. And that's how do you think that's that could be quite a long job? I would imagine. Uh, I suppose it depends how much you want. Oh, I've changed the color. That's okay. We need a lot. We need to bring the lava. That we need to bring lava down from the from the very volcano. I can give it the full six. It's a big job. It's a big job. Oh, you want like a big, big yeah. container, not like little handheld buckets that we can just... No, like a, an ongoing oh, flow, yeah. an ongoing yeah. flow. I love the little toilet you've built in our village. Thanks. It's also drinking water. So so would you say that we... That makes us abund... Did it... Is it good for water, Ewan? Uh, yeah, I think we, we made a relatively functional well. I think we found water. There's got to be water somewhere, right? The robots have got to... Exactly. 
Find maybe out they're water from somewhere. So maybe they're digging it out of the ground. <laughs> it, takes, it takes three weeks to get down if you're, you know, mere humans in a settlement. But I think there is water down there. I wouldn't time. say it's, you know, it's not as much water as it is clocks. But no. but there's okay. So we're, we're not abundant, but we're not um, short of it either. We're sort of, yeah. we're okay with it. Um, Fiddles has got an even better point of just um, bringing the lava down to the cheese building and making some kind of fondue. So we might be abundant in fondue. <laughs> it is the water smells of eggs. That's the only problem. Every time we drink something, it's re- it's like drinking the water you've just boiled some eggs in. It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> Very hot. To boil it in, <gasps> this which is, is good because we are, we you know we're starting fires all over the place. We don't want to attract a robot here with more fires. Exactly. So we've got hot water on oh, tap. Hot water on, on tap. That's a very good point, Mr. Allen. I'm going to do some <laughs> abundance, steam lines. Abundance of egg smell. Oh, no. There is an abundance of egg smell. Oh. This is great. We can boil our food. We can just dump some things in the well, in a little pot. Bring it out. We can have noodles. This yeah, is, this is make just like a giant a ramen. Oh. Just send a bucket down. <laughs> bring it back up. <laughs> Full of noodles every day. This is great. Love it. Love it. Right, you and next day, next week for you as we head oh. through our spring. A sauna. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just um, people can just sit over the t- but build a little hut over the top of it, and people can sit in it. Two of hearts. Two of hearts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna read out both options for this because it's it's quite amusing. There's a large body of water on the map. Where is it? What does it look like? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Um, or there's a giant man-made structure on the map. Where is it? Why is it abandoned? Oh, I like it. A giant. Uh, a gi- I like a giant mermaid structure. I like a giant man-made structure on the map. Uh, something that would be near a cheese factory, I guess. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? I think actually maybe there is a giant man made abandoned uh, sports arena. Oh, I like it. Obviously. I'm going to whack it down here. And actually, this works well for Fiddle's idea of the future luxury spa and resort. We've now got sport. It's, it's a bit worn down, but we've now got yeah. sport. We've got sports. We got sauna, we got hot water. We just got to get rid of those robots, and we're living the dream. We I got... think it's, um, I think it's abandoned because you know, apocalypse. <laughs> exactly, we're in Rome. Exactly. All of a sudden, it looks like. Well, yeah. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go for that kind of vibe. Oh, we got the mud pools for the people's skin. This is great. It's just those robots. That's the only problem. And getting the cheese cheese factory operational again. This is a this is a great picture, you and I think I'm having to stand for you now. I'm just going to brief stand moment while you do that. Ah, uh, thanks. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's all you're getting. Uh, okay. <laughs> I could do three more, two more layers of doors, but no. it's going to take a while. Cool. Uh, and then knock down the scores. The robot trap. Oh, we're getting close and, to the robot trap now. What is that? A three and a five. We're going for. Three and a five. We'll get there. We'll get those robots. Just got to see them off. Uh, and I think we discover something new. Um, I want to say that we discover. Uh, lots of old sports equipment in the stadium. Nice. Um, possibly to go with our clogs. You know, we can have clogs and clogs and a uniformed kit for the. Oh, I like it. For the people in our settlement. That's my like maybe baseball bats or something to whack things with. Yeah, yeah maybe. I oh, sorry, yeah, I suppose I've got to I've got to commit as to what sport it was. Uh. I think it's a nice hockey stadium. No. 
an Italian so ice hockey stadium. Yeah, so we've discovered uh, some some uniform and some ice hockey equipment. Nice. That's good. Uh, and that's my guy, I believe. I think you need to draw on the you need to draw the uh, the stuff in the oh, near the stadium. That's... I see. Uh, I tell you what, we're just gonna do, uh, you know, because we're getting quite small on scale now. We we'll just have some kit bags and some stuff in. Uh, <laughs> uh, possibly, uh, possibly scythe. I always thought the fiddle could tiddle. Okay. I like it. It's good. So much equipment. Look at that. Next month is the three of hearts. Um, um, Okay, someone new arrives in town, an outsider, a stranger. I'm going to draw the person. Big pen on some reason, that won't help at all. The new person is going to be a... <sighs> Ah. Oh, I know what he's going to be. It's, it's easy to draw. Here he comes. Do, 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 There's a little cape out behind him. It's a magician man. A man who has travelled the the vast expanses and he's come across our town looking to um looking for a place to finally rest his hat. He is a magician. He's come to entertain and to wow. But can we truly believe in his magic or is he a charlatan? <sighs> Um, but that's who we've got now. Could it bring harmony or trouble? I don't know. Um, right, so everything goes we're one week quicker to. to it's, it is dual panels. Two and four. Two and four. How do you say that? A discovery or a project? The Great Surprenda. <laughs> Let's have a look on the map. Let's zoom out on the map. I'm very slow at making decisions today. Um, we, I think that it would be nice to Start work on something. I think we should start a project. You and do you get your pen ready? Yeah, on it. Excellent. I want us to start work on making some um, wagons. Something or sleds or something just to make the transportation of things easier it's a lot you know, there's a lot of moving around there's a lot of traveling and i think it's the world would feel smaller and more linked together if we can bring things in we need a cart to put the apples in yeah an apple cart why not let's put it <laughs> that way uh what do you want to call it make make cart <laughs> Carts. well there we go i don't think it'll take too long 
make a comp with everyone involved. You know, I think it's quite a short little project. We've got to get wheels, right? Wheels might take a little while if we're going to do wheels. Yeah, I suppose if we're stripping the factory already, there might be some kind of round oh. metal. In which, case, in which case, I think that's short. It's, I think it's a one-week job then. I don't think there's much to it. Would you agree? Would, would that be fair? I think that is fair. Chat might tell us otherwise. <laughs> How long Maybe we're we'll being too easy. Too easy on ourselves. <laughs> Take it out of point point. Oh, it. we have no wood. We, are we strip, it's with the metal stripping. So how long's the metal strip? Uh, we've got four weeks left. Okay, so make it <clears> f- <throat> make it five weeks to make a cart then. When the metal strip, uh, it's. I think we have to strip all the metal before we can oh. start making a cart. Uh, it's your call. It's your call. I tell you then. Let's make it fair. Let's go two weeks to get enough metal started, and then that that stops us from cheating too much. I guess. Let's make a nice metal cart with a little bit of the metal. And I think that will make things better. Are we happy? Well, I don't. If you're not happy, you can take contempt. Why do I care? Oh, look, go on. No, no, I'm happy. I can't just do it for the sake <laughs> you can't of just it. do it for the sake of <laughs> I, just want, I just want to be contemptuous. <laughs> okay. Next week, oh, it's yes. still spring. It is the <clears throat> Ace of Hearts. Oh, the Ace of Hearts. Uh, I'm going to go with what group has the highest status in the community and what must people do to gain inclusion into this group. Uh, I don't know if this is kind of cheating, but I want the children to have the highest status. You know, they spend all night going out, running around, putting, starting fires, putting them out again, fending off the, uh, the robots, albeit not actually fending them off, but distracting them. So I think the children should have the highest status in the community. Um, I like that. However, there is literally nothing you can do to gain inclusion into that group. I suppose people might try and, you know, as they become more adult, they might yeah. try and look yeah. younger, you know, dress down, shave. Uh, use the old mud. beards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so we've become a try bit... Try and appear more childlike. So we've become a bit Logan's run. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Children are the future after all, Miss Dunning. You're right. You're right. There's a song in that. <laughs> uh, yes, so that is what we're going to do. And then I'm going <laughs> to knock down. That's why clogs are so important, I know, because they're such a good thing to put your knees into. That's why they're such an honourable, an honorary thing in our community. Um, right, and then I want to uh, have a discussion. I think there's a group of uh, people in our settlement that don't uh, that don't trust the great Superendo. Uh, they think he's a shelter. What? All okay. I can all I can get to do is that a question or a statement? That's a statement. From, select few people in the community um the other there is another select few in the community is there a specific aspect of the community that's saying that you sorry uh no i don't think so i don't think they're uh, i think it's just a group of people that are um a bit skeptical perhaps the skeptics in the community in fact i think they approach the uh, the children being you know the children are the highest well on behalf, high status. on behalf of the children, then, the children are in awe of the great Suprendo. They especially love it when um, when he uh, when he pulls his thumb off, whoop, 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 and when he uh, takes coins from behind their ears, like makes money out of nothing. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? Kids, kids love a magician. Mm. Oh, but there is a little bit of a... A little bit of a thing. But I'm going to take a contempt. Think, <laughs> You're you know, unhappy about it. <laughs> I'm not unhappy about it, but I think in the community there will be a little bit of uh, disagreement. And I guess the great sea is still there, so you would be the one that has contempt. That makes sense. Yeah. You know, the, the highest ranking people in the community love right. the great sea friend. Oh, so, so they say, yeah, I can see. Right, on we go. Ten of hearts. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, that's the last one, I think. Ten of hearts. Oh. Oh, I like it. I like it. Oh, man. These are both excellent. Um, there is another community somewhere on the map. Um, where are they and what sets them apart from you? There is another community all along. Now, the other community are... We discovered them while looking for um, down south when the uh, sports um, arena was found. And um, they are down here. Let's put them in a different colour so it's a bit easy to see. They are down here. And what sets them apart from us? What they, sort of what is different to them is that they um, they hate. So I should draw maps for I should draw maps for like my job. Yeah, if anyone out there wants a TCRPG <laughs> map drawn and are impressed by our work, I'll just I'll just do it. You probably need help. <laughs> okay. They hate and they refuse um, to wear boots and clogs. They are um, they're kind of hobbity. They've got like hairy feet. They don't see the need for but their sort of their feet have got used to the heat. They're a bit further away, you see. Their, their feet are used to the heat and they hate everything that the, the clog people stand for. So that's that. <laughs> Literally. Um I'm gonna have a question to you as my go you do we need to change the thing projects first? We do Should indeed. You get to uh, build your car and I get to build some robot traps or draw. Oh, let's traps. draw let's draw my car in. Yes. And strip factory goes down to two. Draw my car in here. I feel a lot safer now that we've got a uh, robot trap in as we said. We can transport things a lot better. Uh, I think the robot truck. Oh, it's not quite what I meant to do. I got the big, big pits in between. Oh, I like it. In between the uh, the fires to try and catch them as they're uh, running through. I like it. Oh, good traps. I feel safer. I do feel safer. I feel safer from the north. Yeah, well, I mean, that seems to be where all the fires are, so yeah, maybe a little bit of ominous red glow. <laughs> uh, my question is, with regards to these new people, uh, do we treat them as friend or foe? I think we are cautiously indifferent. <laughs> I think if their, their aggression of uh, clogs gets, you know, so, um, so intense that they act upon it, then we need to defend ourselves. But until that time, I think we let them live in peace as they are. I I will agree with that answer for now, without any contempt. Cautious. Mm. Cautious. Yeah. Okay. I mean, as long as they don't go after the cheese factory or the sports equipment or the apples. 
All the apples. Okay. The apples. Well, the mud. That's good for the skin. Good for keeping young looking. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Keeping that status. Here we go. We're into the summer. Things change a bit oh. in the summer. Things change up a bit in the story. So the spring, everyone, is very much about setting up the world, really. And the summer does start to bring some challenges. And uh, we start with the Five of Diamonds. The Five of Diamonds. Uh, ooh. I am going to go with a project finishes early. Ooh. So the strip factory has finished early. But I think the reason that it has finished early is because there's not as much metal in there as we oh, thought it was. Because no. the other settlement has been uh, stripping away some of the metal as well. Oh, no. So, you know, it's finished. We're done. We've got our metal. But it's perhaps not as big as we thought it was going to be. Maybe. Right. Right. Does that mean that um, we have to rub away that? Oh. We'll, we'll leave the cheese there as a memory. Yeah, I don't think we you know, <laughs> left the big metal cheese sign on top. As a sign. But you do get to draw some kind of... Uh, oh, yeah, for my display, I get to do some metal. Lava. Metal. Transportation. Although, that's, I think that's another, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another project. Projects. What I'll do is I'll do, I'll do a big like load of... A big pile of metal in case we want it. There we go, that. Cool. The metal's there for when we need it, but you know it's going to be tight to get things done. You know, there's not much left extra. There we go. We got metal. This is good. It's a good amount. Won't do us forever. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Well, so what's your what's your action then? I guess. Uh, I'm going to start a project. We've got no projects. No. I think somebody in the community uh, has come up with the idea that. We can use that metal to build like a not an aqueduct, a lava duct. A lava duct. On like the side of the volcano to somewhere, you know, safely outside the city. Um and that is how we will transport the lava down, I guess. Lava lava down, transport the yeah. lava down. I like uh, it. A lava duct. A lava duct. I'll tell you what, I'll pop this happy if I pop it there. Yeah, I can. Yeah, that's good for me. <laughs> Love it. Uh, I think this is probably quite a... It, it quite feels a big. It feels project. big. Top end, five or six, it's got to be in it. It's a big, yeah, yeah. big engineering Check. project. Oh. I guess it depends on how far it is. So what is the scale of this place? I mean, we're more than, <laughs> 20, more than 20 metres away from an active volcano. <laughs> It's, uh, should we go with six? Okay, go for six. I think that's fair. We don't want to, you know. It'll be half a kilometre. Maybe it's like, maybe the whole map's about a kilometre across, maybe. Yeah. I don't want to make it too easy for ourselves. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, next week is the three of diamonds. Three of diamonds. Ooh. Oh, Oh, ah. Ooh. Oh, it could be. Oh. <laughs> time for it is time for brunch fiddles. Actually, <laughs> it's that you've without um without thinking about it, you've helped you've helped me by doing time for brunch. You've made my decision. We nice. are going to summer is a time for production and tending to the earth. I am going to start a project related to food production. I, I feel it. Um, oh, that means I can type it in now, can't I? Because it's in the space. Um, you say build a cheese factory. <laughs> yeah, yeah what we need is a cheese factory. <laughs> um, we've got, like, we're not starving in our village. There's obviously food around and that, but maybe we're hunter-gathering and things like that. I want us to... Um, it's going to be a while for it to grow. What's going to grow quickly? Uh, potatoes. We've got some potatoes. We need to um, we need to plant some potatoes. So it's potato fields. I'm going to call it. And that's going to take ages. I'll make it six. But um, 
only because that's the longest I can make it. But I think we're going to start some potato fields. So, so in the autumn, and sort of in, we'll have an abundance of food. I guess. Is that six weeks all in all? We'll get potatoes at the end of six weeks. Six weeks we'll get, yeah, things are a bit janky. That'll do. Well, that, oh, yeah, I think so. The potato fields are starting to produce, I guess. It's slightly simplified. Yeah, I grew up on a farm. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to find a discovery is my turn, if that's okay. Um, a discovery is that... Uh, down here while the people were you know like when we were finishing off the cheese factory what we actually found while we were down there swinging down this way oops ah, i'm not clicking it oh no oh. <laughs> well, i'm not doing that again that was close, guys. <laughs> we almost lost it. Lost it all. Uh, what it? <laughs> uh, but don't click the back button. That's the, that's the secret. Um, right. Is an old train track. Now, we don't know whether there's anything in use, because we've only just discovered it. We don't know what the deal is, whether it is truly abandoned and broken down. And where it goes to, but there is a train track down in the southern, southwestern corner. After I've nearly had my heart attack, and that's the discovery. Uh, if you're zoomed in as well, you got rid of your metal pile, I think. Oh, did I? Ah, uh, that explains a lot. Was, okay. Is that the only thing? Is that the only thing I got rid of? Uh, a little bit of the volcano, which I just redid, okay. and the top hat from the magician. Oh no! <laughs> but that looks like it. That's the metal pile, anyway. Cool. Oh, no. His hat's now really big. <laughs> See, he's he's come back with a bigger hat. Lucky yeah. him. Okay. There we go. There's nothing else that I deleted. I'm not doing that button again. That would be helpful. <laughs> okay. So there we go. So we've um, we've started some potato production, and we found a train track. Nice. Nice. Uh, six of diamonds for you, young man. Six of diamonds. Uh, I think some outsiders arrive in the area. Oh. Um, and I think there is say a dozen of them, 12, 12 people. What? Uh, and I think we greet them quite warmly. None of them yeah. seem to be magicians. The children might not be <laughs> as happy as they were when uh, our other guest arrived. But I think, you know, we invite them to come sit around our steaming hot water well. It's the first, the first <laughs> guests paying guests give them a, yeah give them a tour of the old cheese factory <laughs> it's not, not a very big tour anymore <laughs> welcome them in from the the death robots the steam powered death robots <laughs> yeah 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 fantastic i like it that's nice so we've got some new friends that come to, as in they've come to join us uh they arrive in the area okay so hanging out with us at the minute. So yeah, they're just you know milling around, nomads okay. passing through, I guess for now. Okay, I like it. I'll do the. Um, I'll work on the project. I'll, now I can yeah. see them. I'll rub it out while you think about what your thing's going to be. I guess. Uh, I rather than just jumping in and starting a new project, <laughs> I think there are a few people in the community who think, well, we stripped the, the cheese factory, we didn't get as much metal as we thought, um, but we did find this railway track. How about we strip some metal from the railroad track to add to our project? Oh. Is that a question or a discussion? No, that is a question, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> is that some people? Um, 
I guess I'll give. A, I'll have to give a counter answer then. I will. I'll say um, if it's a tr- if it's a working, if there are working trains that are still on it, keeping the train check there might enable a better uh, trade system or tra- transport system than we currently have. That's what some people in the village might say. So a split village again. Mm. I'm going to take some contempt at the idea that you even thought about stripping such a magical <laughs> piece of engineering. How very dare you. That's a brilliant drawing. <laughs> yeah. So I know you just do that. I went through a lot of stress for that. Let me get that dice out. Let me get my contempt dice out. It's going to be one of my pink dice. That's like super contemptuous. There we go. Very upset about that sort of thinking. Okay. Uh, next week. It's the Nine of Diamonds. Um, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. This is, both of these are bad, man. Both yeah. of these are bad. I'm going to go with... Um, <sighs> okay. Something goes foul... And supplies are ruined. I'm going to add a new scarcity. So, um, because of um, the new village being nearby the sports centre, our attempts at sort of getting sports gear um, is proving very difficult. They're very protective of their of it. And so now, whereas once before we had that sort of, we could have used it as weapons, we could have used it for, because it was ice hockey, right? So it's helmets and that sort of thing. Yeah. Now, um, I'm going to put some minuses there. We we can't have any more. There's a real scarcity now. We've got a real shortage of, like, personal protection. A shortage of PPE. <laughs> Sporting PPE. Yeah, cool. And um I'll get rid of that. Oh yeah, we do that. And I'll start oh, and I'll start another project while you're up there. That's okay. Uh-huh. I want to bring oh if we've really shot off you're right, the, the train would give us supplies because really all our all our metal is gonna be going to the thing, isn't it? Oh, oh I've ruined myself here. <laughs> Okay, I want to start a, um, a digging a channel for the mud. Call it a mud channel. Hmm. Um, with the idea that if we can bring that closer to us, mud is useful because you can dry it, you can bake it, it can make bricks, can't it? You can use it as a construction material. Yeah. So a mud, a mud channel, and I feel that would take a while. And it's just digging, but it's still a distance. It's got to be at least four weeks, I would imagine. A mud channel. With the idea that it, yeah, we'd then have a pool of it nearby our village after that. Mud for the mud spot. That, that's what I'm thinking, Leonard. I'm pretending it's all for good strategy, but I'm just trying to build a spa on the slide. <laughs> so. Who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want that? It sounds pretty good. It doesn't need to be on the slide. <laughs> we're, we're all in on the spa. Yeah. Okay, you and your turn. The Ace of Diamonds, the Ace of Diamonds. I feel that the robots are less of a threat now. I was very scared of them at the start of the game. This is good, I kind of like it. Um, (laughs) So contingent within the community have acted on their frustrations. What have they damaged, and why did they damage it? <laughs> Is it permanent? <laughs> I think the the group of people who wanted to deconstruct the railway line <sighs> for more metal got yeah. really frustrated. Um, they haven't damaged the railway line, but they have defaced and permanently damaged the cheese. Oh, no. The remnants of the cheese factory. The cheese factory is like an iconic thing that brought joy to our village. 
Yeah, so I think they, you know, knocked a, knocked a little wedge off of it. They didn't do a great job. Because, <laughs> you know, they haven't got much of their supply. They probably threw some threw a bit of green paint over it. Oh, you, no. Yeah, I was a bit worried they were going to damage the magician. <laughs> so that would have been good. <laughs> Knock his hat off. Poof! So many options. So many options. <laughs> it is fiddles. We just like can't make any really big decisions. They're all just like little things. They yeah. are the, the kids. Yeah. Arson to graffiti. <laughs> it's because we've got the pits now. They're a bit sort of they've got a bit more free time in their hands. Mm. Uh, um, and how many how many people have we got here? We've got um, seventy. It was between sixty and eighty, so seventy. Okay, cool. So I would like to start a new project. Or should um, I rub out the other three? Oh yeah. I'll do Thanks. those where, I'll do those where you type in the new one. Um and I think the, that it's been decided that we should explore the ravine a bit and see what's done in the ravine. Ooh. So I think um that there needs to be some kind of ladder or rope down. Um that needs to be constructed and put in place. Uh, or just a way down to the bottom of the way down to the ravine. Way down to the bottom of the ravine. I like uh, it. How long do you reckon that will take? It depends how heavily engineered it is. If you're carving footholds, it's a big engineering thing. If we're, if we're sort of grabbing what ropes we have and sort of doing stuff, it's going to oh be gosh. at least three or four. I'd say three or four. Might as well. Let's go with four. Or five. <laughs> four, five. Yeah. Cool. I like it. I've been feeling very constructive. Right. Ten of diamonds for me. Um, ah, excellent. Oh, they're both good, actually. We discover a cache of supplies or resources. Add a new abundance. I like it. Nice. I like it. Um, right, let's get, get my drawing pen out. It's not going to be red because it's good news. Um, what could... Ah, I know. Let's do it. Let's use that color. Right. So you know by the um, by the muddy pools. Oh, that's yes. that, that color will confuse people. Oh, it's awkward. No, let's we use um, by the muddy pools where animals have died due to some weird science that we're not quite sure of. And uh, it wouldn't be actually it's not that sort of yellowy. I'm, I'm, I'm taking it very seriously, the cups. <laughs> um, what we found is in sort of some pits and pools, there's actually like um, loads of animal fats that have congealed into like soaps and things like that, like cl cleaning. So it's we can clean and we can be... Um, we don't have to worry so much about injury and things and so on, if that makes sense. Yeah. There's a there's so cleaning supplies, animal fats, cleaning soaps. I've got some pluses there. Soaps. So now I've got lots of soap and cleaning. I feel it's nice. It's a bit it's a bit near the the robots, but I think you know. Uh, so if you yeah work on the projects. Yeah. Uh, My question will be um, standing up in the town hall. We've seen the the wanton damage that has been done to our mighty cheese. Do we need to give our a number of our village a real sort of mission that they can sink their teeth into to feel, you know, a sense of accomplishment? <coughs> rather than just projects? That's my question. Do we need to give them more work so they stop having fun? Is yes, that, that, that is the question that, that the um, <clears throat> that the kids, the kids, no, the, the elderly again are asking. 
the elderly, think, the elderly always want the kids to stop having fun. Yeah, well, exactly. I think the kids, I think the kids say no. What's wrong with? I like the way the new cheese looks. Frankly, <laughs> it's more interesting than it was before. Um, I don't think we need to make unnecessary work for no reason. Um, the the older people are very upset about this. Um, there should be more work. Idle hands are the devil's plaything. And ever since the, um, the the killer robots are less of a threat, um, you children have been getting uh, like, like slovenly and <laughs> lazy, and they take contempt at the thing. There is a there is a broadening upset within the village. Uh, -oh. uh seven of diamonds. Seven of diamonds. Uh, I'm going to introduce a mystery at the edge of the map. <clears throat> so I think it's a mystery. down in, as people are carving their way down to the ravine, the very edge of the map here, there is a light green, gl oh no, that's text. <laughs> a light green text. <laughs> a light green glowing oh, area they can't see what it is yet it's just giving off of, at night as they you know as it twilight comes and they're finishing up their work for the day they can see this gentle green hue emanating from this area of the map with a big question mark that's oh. not actually there but denotes mystery <laughs> it denotes like the question mark of mystery Okay, so that's uh, and then what's your? I'll, I'll do the the projects while you decide what you want to do. Um, and then for mine, I am going to raise a point. I think the the magician is he's got wind of this <laughs> uh, this green glow, uh, and he thinks it should be made a priority to go and find out what the green glow is. Um. It sounds magical. It does. Um, speaking as the um, so hey, that's you're speaking as the magician, I guess. Uh, the the children are, are very excited about this. They're excited about the magician anyway, and they mm -hmm. they like the idea of an exciting adventure. Nice. Yes. Okay. Um, four diamonds. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> um, the eldest among us has died. What caused this death? The eldest was found mysteriously face down in the mud holes. Um, was it an accident? Was it on purpose. We don't quite know, but it appears his clogs have been taken. <laughs> so there's a suspicion that it was some sort of foul play. I'm going to draw a little dead man in the pool. That's okay. It's not going to be very visible, but yeah. <laughs> you know it's there. I know, so that's the important thing. Lip, 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 and up a little. Oh, all right. Because it, it's ripped on. Um, so that's that. And then, um, oh, projects are completing before we do anything. We've got loads of projects completing. We've got a lot of projects. Uh, so you get to draw some potato fields and a mud channel, or the potatoes, I suppose. Oh, yeah, I've got a mud channel. This is great. Uh, and I will draw a lava duct, or do you want to draw that? Because no. you started off the initial. Oh, thing, you, didn't you? you draw it, you draw it. I'm excited. Okay. 
really good straight bit of engineering. Bit of ruler. There's the there's the mud nearby. Oh, that mud we've got nearby. Very handy. Very handy. I see some potatoes. A couple of fields of potatoes. Potatoes we've got. I don't know all the potatoes we ever need. Different types as well. Like all sorts of different types. Of oh, this is a very good. Very good turn that. <laughs> I guess that means all the metal's gone though, or the main supply of metal. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. There we go. Um, and I'll start a new project, I think, which will be a. Um, Oh, I've got nothing to build with. That's the problem. We've sort of thrown ourselves into a corner of not many materials. We've got the mud. Oh, I'll tell you what. Our new project should be like... Um, how about a kiln? There we go. But we oh, need to, so. we'll need to dry the mud out, which will take a few weeks and build it. So I reckon it's going to be like four weeks, maybe. Because, you know, we've got to dry the mud. And then we've got... Then after that, we can build things out of bricks, I guess. Okay. Nice. Right. right, you and it's oh, we're into autumn. Uh -oh. Autumn has appeared. When we least, I woke up one morning and there was a slight chill in the air. I don't know about you. And it turned out it was the nine of clubs. Just in time for the potatoes. Oh, that's good. Um, a group goes out to explore the map more thoroughly uh, and finds something that had been previously overlooked. <clears throat> hey Sparrow, you alright? Hey Sparrow. Um, so I think the a group of people from the village follow the train tracks for a little way, you know, just to see where they're going. Uh, and I think somewhere down the line, they find uh, a small area, small wooded area with oh, some trees. Oh, some trees! Not an abundance, but there is, you know, somewhere down here, there are trees. Badly drawn trees. Trees. <laughs> trees nonetheless. Uh, and we don't know how we overlook them, frankly, because we've got apples. There must be apple trees. I'm sure. <laughs> I think we just sort of walked past, uh, like never looking up, just apples that have fallen on the ground. Yeah. Trees. That's good now. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Um, I'll rub out the projects while you... Um... Oh, you get to complete your way down to the ravine, by the way. Oh, right. Uh, okay. I think... We're going to carve out some steps. Just to make it difficult for myself to draw. So yes, I said that on the chat, but while Ewan is carving out steps, uh, our village is now into the autumn, if anyone's just tuned in. Um, we're built in the middle with the TPs. Um, we have abundance in clogs. We also have abundance in soaps and sort of cleaning animal fat, where we found some sort of long mummified animals or something. Um, unfortunately, we are short in wood, 
and we're now short in like we found some sports equipment which we were using as personal protection uh helmets and like songs as ice hockey gear which we now don't have because there's a village down the bottom who don't like clogs they haven't made contact with us yet but they've sort of been taken away all the gear so there's none there to the north there are killer steam robots which were a danger to start with but the kids who are the most important part of the village would go around at night setting fires to confuse them and uh, under Ewan's hand we created some traps which are the circles full of stuff pits to stop the robots. Uh, a magician joined the village that's caused quite a divide. The kids love him, adults hate him. Um, we've now got a well full of very hot volcanic water because the volcano is on the top left. We've got a metallic cart for transporting stuff. We've got a metallic um, lava uh, lava duct and we've got a um, we've dug a, a pit from the mud to sort of bring mud closer to the village with the idea for a kiln for the bricks we've discovered a train track in the bottom corner and some trees there was a giant cheese factory which we broke apart for the metal and then some of the youths graffitied the remaining cheese statue and we store our food in the bottom right hand corner which is by a big ravine which uh, Ewan has just completed some stairs down and there's a mysterious green glow in the bottom corner. I like it. So what right. are you going to do as your final turn of the turn then? As my turn, I am going to... Um, I think the kids have decided that they should send off a party of people to investigate the green guy and nice. find out what it is. Um, but I think it will take quite a long time. <laughs> it's a long, long way away, long way there, long way back. That is true. Um, what do you reckon? Then I feel it's got to be at least four, doesn't it? If you're thinking that there and back, like if it's going to be a, at least a week there, at least a week back, some sort of researching, some sort of things out. Yeah. So is that sort of thing you were thinking of, like it taking a while, like doing a yeah. thorough expedition? Yeah. Look at that then. That uh, let's go five. Five? Oh, a th very yeah. thorough expedition. Sorry, I'm not just being <laughs> didn't tell them. Uh... That's okay. That's okay. Right. Right, um, so my autumnal turn next is uh, four of clubs. Oh no. The strongest in our village has died. Cool. Um, what has caused the death? From what we can gather from the corpse that was found to the north, um, was that he was brutalised by the robots that we thought <laughs> lactose intolerance? Yeah, everything was going so well, <laughs> and then suddenly the strongest one has his weakness. Um, but no, he was um, he and he was the strongest, and that's the most terrifying thing. He was out there one night, and then he didn't come back. It was like the strongest lad, you know, like eighteen years old, big and strong, been lighting fires all his life, and uh, that's what made it more terrifying. Is that here is his dead body, brutalised by the robots that we thought weren't a problem, but it appears they are adapting and they are a danger again, it's a menace to society. There we go. So, I'll so, change the text. <laughs> what? Sorry, no. No, what a horrible way to die. <laughs> um, I'm going to... Um, we're going to discover something. Because one of the things is discovery, isn't it? And what we've, yes. what we've discovered is that the robots have been building like a cave network to get around underneath the ground mm -hmm. they're learning so they're sort of there's a bit more 
popping up here and there. So not quite there yet, but you know, a bit dangerous. So, yeah. But they uh, they look terrifying. They look just like gothic fingernails. So, okay. But that is a cave, that is a cave network material. I'll tell you a bit green. So, that's just it's terrifying. That's okay. So there's a robotic cave network that we've discovered. There we go. That's my turn, which is a worry. Um, five of clubs, Ewan. Five of clubs. Five of clubs. Uh, a small gang of marauders is making its way through the local terrain. How many are there? What weapons do they carry? Uh, so I think there's five or six, a handful, a handful of marauders making their way through the um, the terrain. Uh, and they carry... Uh, I'm gonna go. I'll go with your prompt from earlier. They, contrary to the to the ice hockey equipment, they carry baseball bats. Oh. You're on you're on writing at the minute though. If you're looking where you're going to put. Them. Uh, yeah. Thanks. I think that they come in from the south, uh, and I think they sort of join join up with this oh, no. settlement down here. So sort of making that settlement a bit more aggressive. Potentially. Oh. Oh, hemmed in. Robots to the north. Settlement to the south. Magician, <laughs> magician staying just to the, the west. Mysterious green glow to the east. Uh, this one's got club. <laughs> That's... I wish I was watching this on my TV. I bet it'd look lovely. <laughs> um, yeah. Sparrow, we do. We do. We stand for you. Oh, thanks, Sparrow. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? <laughs> there he is. I didn't put it up. <laughs> <laughs> I made that one. I hope you like it. <laughs> there we go. Oh, we do. Isn't he wonderful? It'd make a good meme, to be fair. It is lo he is lovely, isn't it? He is the easiest. <laughs> yeah. well, we're all standing for you and right now let's calm it down a bit everyone come on there's more game to go we can't just like focus on you in the whole time yeah. uh, right and then I'll erase um, three and one uh, and for my go I think there is going to be a town discussion I think the the children um are realize that they are still the you know this generation of children they probably haven't grown up that much in a few fair few weeks but those that still remain uh don't really want to be running around at night anymore on lighting fires they had a good thing going they weren't doing it anymore um but they kept their their important status within the community uh, and i think this they're, they're worried about all these robot tunnels popping up uh, and they want to know what the community thinks we should do about the robot tunnels mm. we're going to need to collapse the tunnels if nothing else it buys us time um, but working out the best way to collapse something would take more thought but that is the view of the are we talking from the elders, I guess, at this time? Uh, yeah. They, they should be collapsed during the day, of course, because the robots come out at night mostly. And, uh, yeah, we need to knock those tunnels down. We've got to put them back some time. Cool. That sounds good. Oh. Uh, and that's me done. Okay. Um, ten of clubs. Da -da -da. This is the next week. Oh, oh yes, look at that. Um, harvest is here and it is plentiful add an abundance well that means the potato harvest was spectacular nice. and uh, 
there is more potatoes than you could ever, ever need. There are many potatoes. So we have, we're good for food now, and we don't have to rely so much on our food storage, which we sort of, although we, you know, potatoes still need to go over there, but we're just pulling a lot of potatoes out of the ground at the minute, as quickly as we can eat them, so it's good news. Boil them in the well. Is it, oh, it's perfect, <laughs> isn't it? What are our projects? Um, investigate green I, get to, I get to build a kiln as well. On. Yes. I'll do that, you do the, uh, you get on the drawing. I want, I'm not very good with explode. We don't have any ways to make explosives to destroy tunnels. I don't know how we're going to destroy the tunnels. I've said that and I have no idea how we're going to do it. <laughs> so in which case, I think our project needs to be Okay, it's going to be stage one of a, um, while we're sort of considering that, uh, for long term defence, I think we need to start building a fire moat using the lava to just, um, it won't stop everything, but to make certain corners, like certain directions hard to be attacked from, if that makes sense. Yeah. So we're not going to be able to fill up the whole thing. So it will take, I reckon even for a small bit, it's going to take a few weeks just for a corner, I reckon. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Like three three weeks just to block them from the north, you know, let alone that whole northeast area. But, you know, it, it takes the edge off a little bit. They're becoming dangerous again. That's, oh, they're definitely growing King Edwards. Don't you worry about that. Only, <laughs> only the best where we're from. Um, Ewan, Queen of Clubs. Clubs. Oh, and I've, got oh, to no. my, I've got to do my kiln. Yes. Oh, no. I don't like, oh, no. Uh, disease spreads through the community. Choose one. Uh, and I'm going to choose you spend the week quarantining uh, and treating the disease. Project dice are not reduced this week. Oh. Uh, so some horrible, horrible disease has been brought in by the, the marauders, I guess. It's spread down to the angry club people and it's airborne. Oh, and the prevailing no. winds have sent it over towards our settlement. Uh, and now we're all ill. Oh. Apart from the magician, for some reason. <laughs> I told you it was magic, you old folk. Why do you never believe but, it? But he can't do all the projects on his own, so we don't we don't move down the project. But it keeps everyone happy by going to their um, their sick beds and woo, 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 woo. Yeah, I like it. Keeps keeps morale. <laughs> keeps morale. I think he's becoming a loved member of society finally. Yeah, he's settled in well. Definitely. <laughs> it's taken most of the year. Okay. Um, um, that's your I'm going to ask you a question. Yes, please do. Um, do when we build uh, lava moat defences, do we um, do we include the mud pits or do we just include our little trench? Does it <sighs> does it cut off at the trench and sort of you know we've still got mud supply but we go underneath or we stop for a little break for a little bit or do we attempt to go all the way around the mud pits? I think that'd be too far. I I reckon we have to start small. If that makes sense, focus on the core of things, and it's just going to be risky getting those things. It'll take weeks and weeks and weeks to dig out that far. Yeah, I agree. All right. Oh, that's good. I'm glad we agree because of our agreement and my happiness with the agreement. My contempt is um, is going down. One, I feel we've been yeah. very agreeable recently. So. Yeah, it's been a while since any contempt was added. Yeah, I'm feeling joy. My contempt is down to one. My contempt for you is. Is lower than it was. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, eight of 
clubs, I think we had spades in for a second. I had a moment. Eight of clubs. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> These are both really rubbish. But I guess it's autumn when bad things happen. Mm. Um, hang on a second. I need to look at the picture a bit more zoomed in. What's that say? Oh, Okay, someone sabotages a project and the project fails as a result. Uh, we wake up one morning and find that the fire moat has been, what we've done so far, trashed. The spades have been broken and it is like destroyed from where it is. And it turns out that it was the magician. When everyone was sick, oh. <laughs> the magician all along. Uh, trashed the fire pits. I know we shouldn't have trusted <laughs> So my question to you is, what should we do with the magician? The elders are ready to march him up the volcano uh, and throw him into the lava pit. Oh. I think they're they're frustrated. You know, this is for our safety. The, He's endangered the whole the whole city. The the children uh, want him locked up so that he can still perform tricks for them, but <laughs> under under lock and key, kind of like a, a a slave magician. Those I guess those are the two. Two different viewpoints. Well, that ends there. And as people know, we can't make final decisions on those things. It's just up for discussion. And if one of us chooses to do something, then so be it. Um, next is the three of clubs for you, Ewan. Three of clubs. Ooh. Uh, someone leaves the community after issuing a dire <laughs> warning. Oh. Who? And what is the warning? Uh, the magician is worried about his fate. It's he cool. he was listening outside, you know, the, the town hut where they convened for their meeting uh, and heard the two options of being locked up, performing tricks, which to be fair sounded okay, but the other one scared him off. Um, so he's left the community, uh, but before he does, he, he makes a big scene uh, and throws open his arms and lightning cracks in the sky behind him <laughs> and says, um, hey, what's the real thing? <laughs> be, uh, beware, you've, you've cast me out. Um, and more plague and pestilence so shall uh, ruin your crops and your settlement. And he scurries <sighs> off. Um, probably towards the ravine and away from the volcano. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit scared. Oh, in fact, can I just can I, can I copy him? Can I select him and uh, just drag him oh. over to the other settlement? Risky leaves, leave us. And, uh... Is there an option for it? Oh, I don't think there is. Oh, it's can so, you redo your drawing? It's so <laughs> so risky. I'll, I'll redo it. Where do you want him? Over here, down down here by the ravine. Uh, with the other settlement, I think he joins oh, the okay. other settlement. Yep, I can do that. Wonderful. Sort of hat. It's going to be big again. That's okay, he loves his big hat. His hat's getting bigger all the time. I'll put a big cross through him. It's his body. It's his wand. Alakazam. There's his cape. There he's down with the others now. Wonderful. I'll reduce the green glow. Uh, and then uh, I think I'm going to start a project. Nice. Um, I think the, the kids are so caught up in their their mob mentality that they, they don't care that the magician's gone. They want people to start building uh, a jail cell. Oh. With with uh you know like decent viewing and some seats around it so <laughs> potentially they could view magic tricks 
<laughs> so whoever ends up in the jail has to do magic tricks. Yeah. Um, what do you reckon? Um, Play weaker? Yeah, we, brick, the bricks are dry. We've got bricks there now, haven't we? We've probably got yeah. a few little rough bits of metal for the bars, I'd imagine. Some yeah. scraps lying around. Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Wonderful. Oh, right. Um, Jack of Clubs. I feel we're getting very close to the end of autumn. Uh, Jack of Clubs. Can't do that one, so I've got to do that one. A project finishes early. Which one and why? Well, the green guy's going to go anyway, so it must be the build jail. So you get to build your jail, you. And I guess it finishes early because there is excitement among the the young children and so well, and the teenagers about the idea of having a place where there will be entertainment, even though they've got a wrong view of it. They're excited that there yeah. could be a, an enforced stage for people they can basically vote on to be chucked into jail for a week or two. Yeah. I'll rub out the projects. So yeah. So cool. they, they they worked extra hard. They spent the whole time they weren't even lighting fires properly. They were building their jail. I'm gonna build it over here. They're gonna build it where the magician used to live. Ah uh, like it. That's quite a statement. Yeah. Just to, you know scare him off if he ever comes back to his old haunt. <laughs> You've gone three-dimensional. Hey, Diesel Shot. You're all right. You join us um, You join us in the late autumn of our village, and we've just cast a magician out of our village because um, it turned out that he sabotaged our fire pits that we were building to keep the steam robots away. And... And so he's run off to the other village in the south who we don't trust. <laughs> he did, and he was really good. It turns out he was a good magician. Ewan didn't trust him at all the whole time, and he was right not to trust him. But I love the fact that um, he could do that thing with his thumb. And he, he took coins out from behind people's ears all the time, I think. And uh, we stand for Ewan. Thanks, Fiddles. We do stand Thanks. for you. Um. <laughs> so we've done that. So now I need to come up with something at the end of my turn. What we are going that we are going to Oh, you need to tell me first what happened with the green glow. You've completed that expedition. What is in the what is the green glow? Oh. You went there without no, knowing. I had, a, I had a lot of time to think about <laughs> Yes, that, Forty minutes to think what the green glow is. No, it'll take it'll take ages. Um, okay, so the the party come back from investigating the green glow far off to the other side of the ravine, um, and there's a there's a big collection of glowing mushrooms at the base of the ravine. Ah, oh, now it's And they've brought a few back. These weird fluorescent. <laughs> Glow in the dark mushrooms. I like it. Um, so my project is going to be um, it's going to be a short one because we've got. I want to create a um, a soup kitchen. We've got hot water, we've got potatoes, we've got mushrooms, and it's a good way of feeding everyone. So it's going to be like a communal, you know, benches. There's going to be, um, the, you know, the water from the well, the fire from the kiln can all be combined into a beautiful thing. And it won't take too long, a couple of weeks, I reckon, for a soup kitchen. So that, you know, food is a magical thing and we can enjoy the mushrooms that you've brought back. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, on to you, Ewan. Oh, you've got the mushrooms. Mm, there's the mushrooms. Well, right. it, what, what, what were we supposed to be again, Fiddles? What was our... We were an um, abstract social force. I think so, yeah. We're, I think that was quite an abstract social force. It's been pretty abstract. Um, that's for sure. We've hit winter, Ewan. Oh, no. The win winter has arrived. And uh, it is eight of spades for you. 
eight. The eight of the eight spades. spades. Um, right, okay, winter is harsh, uh, and desperation gives rise to fear mongering. Choose, I'm going to choose to declare war. The children are, are livid by the betrayal, uh, and they, they don't care about the other settlement, but they're going to declare war on the magician. <laughs> oh dear. He's, he's... For anyone joining in, the children are the ruling force of the settlement. Uh, and so what they say goes, um, it's starting a new project. So this counts as starting a new project. <laughs> War! War on the magician, specifically. So does that mean that's your project for the turn? Or is it an extra thing? Uh, it says this counts as starting a project. Okay. Oh, so it sounds like you've still got something else you can do. Cool. War! How many weeks is this preparation for war, you? Uh, I mean... We don't have an abundance of weapons, do we? So, nope. <laughs> it's gonna take so a long time really to fashion, thought out. They've to got fashion all... weapons out of whatever we can. Brick, bricks, a lot of bricks. bricks. Bricks, yeah. Fire. Perhaps poisonous Firebox. mushrooms with yes. poison. Yes, <laughs> who knows? I can think. Who knows? I can think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna update the soup kitchen while you're doing that. One more week for the soup kitchen. Charity, charity, charity. So with one hand, we're doing wonderful things for the society, and the other hand, you've just started war. Against... Yeah, it wasn't me, it was the children. Is it... Is it... Things I thought I'd never say online. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it war against the magician, or have you taken war against magic, and he's just like the, the figurehead of magic? Yeah, he's he's the figurehead of their betrayal. I think more. You know, they love this guy. He's always <laughs> pulling his thumb off and oh. making coins appear from places. Especially when they were sick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially when the whole town came. That they're now starting to think that you know maybe he he uh, made the whole town sick, oh. riddled with plague. I feel so betrayed. Exactly. Exactly. So was, um, was his name Fess by any chance? <laughs> it definitely sounds like it. <laughs> for for my turn as well, I'm going to have a discussion. I think the kids are going to say we we don't care about um, the other settlement getting caught in the crossfire. Fess, just just Fess. do what we need to do. Um, the elderly that I'm. Uh, this is like our real life, really. You're the youth and I'm the old. Um, the oldly say, we've never trusted them, for they have no faith in the clog. Therefore, we support your warmongering ways. Oh, wonderful. In fact, <laughs> with that, I'm going to get rid of my contempt. <laughs> yes. He's got no more contempt for me. I'll drink to that. I'll drink to the lack of contempt. Middle. How many weeks you put on the war? Uh, five. Yeah, sounds, sounds fair. reasonable. Yeah. I haven't finalised it yet. There you go. Right, and that's your lot then. Here we go. The two of spades. Any type the game could end at any time now. We're in this winter. Oh. 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 He's got choices. <laughs> okay, I have. I've got choices. They're quite interesting choices. Um, a headstrong community member takes charge of the community's work efforts. Um, so one of the the young people, the second strongest after the strongest was killed by the robots uh, a couple of months ago, I guess. Um, he's decided that he's the, the main man. He's the big cheese, the Le Grand Fromage, and that he he's heading it all up. And he um, he charges. He gets at one night. He gets together some of these sort of that some of the adults. We've got there's sixty eight of us left. I guess he tries to take a team of like ten to sneak into the um, the village, the enemy village, 
and um, capture the magician in his sleep. But unfortunately, they went into an ambush because of his pig-headedness. And, <laughs> um, and they, are, they are captured or killed, we don't know. But it does mean that that project fails. They know what's coming now. Um, uh, and we've lost men and women. Can't do anything about it. And because of the poverty and the charity, it means that the soup kitchen finishes while they're away. Everyone else is so shocked that they want to sort of build good things in the community. And so uh, here, they do a little bowl of soup. Just a little spoon. And what type of soup? Are we chucking everything in there? We're going to go some of those glowing mushrooms. I think. Let's, yeah. make, let's make the soup green. Clogs? We're getting clogs in there. <laughs> the, just for flavour. Or the mud. A little bit of mud. We've got potatoes. We've got apples. Oh, potato and apple's always good. And we've got the green yeah. mushrooms. And we've got the hot water, of course, coming up from the uh, the well. So it's a lovely soup. So we've got yes. a soup kitchen now. So everyone is all... Food is not a problem right now. <laughs> and um, as the end of my turn, as the action, um, what they discover... So they discover something. And what they discover is... Um, it turns out they sort of, as they're going down to sort of spend some time looking at the old cheese statue, they feel sorry for what they've done. They found a sh they find a shallow grave, and uh, let's do a bit of mud. There's some sort of a shallow grave. A little, a little cross there for some. And what they find is the dead body of the actual magician. It turns out he had a twin evil brother all along. <laughs> nice. And so the magician they knew and loved, his body looks a couple of months old. So it looks like he um, was good all along. And the other magician was his evil brother who came in and destroyed the, the fire pits, destroyed all our hope and dreams. And then they think back and they realise, actually, yeah, Thinking back, for the last couple of months, he always used to do the thumb trick with the other hand. <laughs> and, you know, and when they think back, they realise things are a bit weird. So, yeah, Was they, the left-handed or the right-handed twin the evil one? The, just, oh, yeah. it's, got, it's got to be the left-handed twin, isn't it? That's just going with tradition. <laughs> terrible, <laughs> terrible traditions. I don't know. He just did his trick with his left hands. He could be ambidextrous, for we know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Anyway, that's their discovery, and that's the end of my turn. Nice. And you've got the nine of spades. Uh, somebody goes missing. Somebody in a community. Uh, I'm going to say the lead voice for the children at this point. You know, sort of their spokesperson, um, the more senior of the children. I don't know whether that be a more senior child or a younger child, seeing as the young have the more seniority. Um, they're alone in the winter elements, and the community organises constant search parties um, looking for the child. Um, and they eventually find them held up in the... Uh, abandoned sports arena next to <sighs> next to the uh, clock hating village. Um, they go they go and find them. They think that this part the uh, the child was, you know, going to uh, exact even more revenge now that they know that the evil twin killed the magician that they know and loved and made them believe that it was him all along. Um, but he didn't fare too well out in the winter, so took some took some refuge in the abandoned sports arena uh, and gets brought back. Poorly, oh, thank, thank goodness. I think I think alive. Thank goodness for that. Uh, there's nothing to reduce. No. Oh, well, well, well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> kind of makes me feel bad now. Um, you, you gamed the system well. I mean, to be fair, the other option wasn't actually that bad 
I mean, it would have been for the kid, but <laughs> not, not for, for this, me. Not for you. <laughs> not for me. Okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a project, then. Um, I think we've got a soup kitchen. We have. Uh, we clearly have a real abundance of food. We do. Um, I want to try and start a trade with the other settlement. Oh. Um, so I think we're going to send off some some people to uh, to talk to the other settlement, find out what they've got to trade, whether they'd be interested in some food. Awesome. It's winter, you know, we've got loads of food. That is true. Bit, of a, pe- bit of a peace offering, after all. Yeah, like, yeah, a little bit. It's probably going to take a while because, you know, relationships are yeah, that is true. on the rocks a little bit. Um, but I don't know how long. I reckon three. I reckon three weeks. It won't take long to gather there, but you know there might be a long discussion and coming back and things. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Wonderful. Uh, before my turn, I have to do a minute of wisdom. Fiddles has redeemed a really complex minute of wisdom. Um, we don't have a timer, so someone will have to time a minute for me, um, or I'll guess. Um, in the face of hindsight, guiding your immediate future. Okay, so it's basically what you know from the past, what how that affects you going forward, I guess. I need to give a minute of wisdom about prosperity and trust. Oh, no. I'll, uh, I'll drop a timer for you. Okay, let me know when you're starting. Or Whenever start. you're ready. Okay. Hmm, I think I'm going to start. Okay. Um... There is an odd saying, uh, which we see today, that hindsight is twenty twenty. that um, it's easy when looking back that we can make decisions uh, going forward. You know, we'll always make the best decision when we look back. That's human nature. However, um, at the time, um, there is no hindsight. So I think it's when you're making that decision at that moment, you are making that decision purely. It's a pure decision based on... Uh, the reality at the time and maybe previous understandings. And so when you're looking at trusting people and looking to build that prosperity, you're just going on what we know at the time. Now, going forwards from that, um, looking back into that hindsight, I guess you go with what, you know, that previous um, experience. So people that find it hard to trust when it comes to uh, money or what investment goes in, um, hey, Miskis, I'm giving a moment of a wisdom. Um, oh, that's really loud. That's your lot, sorry. Thank you. I was, I was only getting started. <laughs> I could have done five minutes. I couldn't really. Hey, Miskis, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I was, I was running out. So I was, that was nearly as bad as your town planning one. Oh, uh, well, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miskis, we're building a, a town. We've nearly finished the year, actually, so... Um, there's been killer robots, there's been magicians, a good magician, then an evil magician who killed his good magician brother. There's glowing mushrooms, there's a volcano, the young children in charge, and there's all sorts of magic. And it's my turn, actually. Uh, the Ace of Spades! We finally hit the Ace of Spades, uh, which is magical. Um, um, oh, what projects have we got? Okay. Um, Now is the time for hurried labour and final efforts. (laughs) Famous Seymour? We don't have, oh, we should have had a little shop of horror parts. That would have been quite exciting, like little triffids and things. Um, <laughs> so, but hurried labour and final efforts. It's, it's winter, we're rushing. In our, so basically, a project will finish early, but we gain a scarcity. So in the children's desire to uh, smooth things over with the town to the south, you know, after the, the failed war and everything, they, they pile the wagons high, they, they don't make good deals because they're so panicking about it. So they finish that project, the, the trade route has been done, but in their, their desire to get it done quickly, they trade badly, which means we now 
they trade away our food. We are now, we've gone from an abundance of food in the middle of winter to a scarcity of food. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. With peace has been peace has been claimed, so I guess that's a victory. We don't need to worry about the South anymore. But I need to put some minuses. The potatoes we've we've given them all our potatoes. We're just we're struggling with the dregs. All we've got is apple and glowing mushroom soup now. We're short of potatoes. Give them all, you know. It felt right at the time. And um, I guess my thing will be um, a question as a town. Do we try and include, now that they're friends, at quite a cost, do we try and include um, the South in our defence against the robots in some way? By claiming danger to them or something like that. Um, the children agree, but only if they agree to give up the evil magician and <laughs> put him in the jail for the entertainment of the children <laughs> to perform tricks day in, day out. Okay. Um, okay, so that's good to know. Okay. Uh, the elderly think anything is worth it for their um, for their allegiance, I guess, for their friendship. I think so. Yeah, I agree. I think we're friends now. Yeah, scarce, and I think yeah, let's try and ally. We can't, and the bots have always been they're nibbling at the edge. We thought we'd held them back with our traps and our fires, but they've started building tunnels, and it's a bit worrying. So it's good to have an alliance. Um, anyway, it's Ewan's week. Let's see what goes from there. So nothing's happened, but we've had that discussion. That's how that bit works. Um, the Ten of Spades, please, Ewan. Oof, there's not even a not even a choice. Oh no! Uh, in preparation for the coming year, the community begins a huge undertaking. Start a project that will take at least five weeks to complete. Um. I think the community has been relatively happy with how the how the year's gone, apart from the the bad trade deal and the lack of potatoes. I think we've had enough food. We've you know we've built a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think the the train track has been left too long, oh, just standing there. It has actually. We've got all about the little wooded area further down south. Um, I think that they want to try and build, uh, not a train, because, you know, that's crazy, but one of, perhaps one of those uh, up and down, you know, go along the train track. Type oh, I love it. To enable, yeah, yeah, to enable them to explore um, further down the train track in either direction more easily. I like it. Uh, which is probably quite a long one that is that's, that's a five week they say at least five yeah. weeks. Oh, really? well we're not going to get to it anyway so make it as long as you want i'd really like i'd really like to try one of those little pumpy pumpy things if you have is on a train it'd be more fun if if it was a little pumpy a pumpy one to get home be quite good Okay, that's your project. So I guess you got your turn left, right? That was your. Oh yeah, thing. of course. Sorry, I was just gonna. Don't sell yourself short. Sure. Leave it at that then. Oh. Um, I would like to start another project. Mm. Uh, I think that um. They're fed up of going so far south, this tiny little wooded area that doesn't have many tra trees. I think they're going to try and grow some apple trees with the apples that we have. Oh. Closer, closer to the village. That's nice. But not the right time of year, but they're going to, you know, they're going to start discussing it and talk about where it's going to go, I guess. Yeah. Me too. 
I think okay, so. I, so I'll put down another six because it's going to take longer than that. It took you into spring to start, yeah, planting them yeah, up yeah, for the growth. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. It's early, early in the year. Okay, cool. Right, there's three cards left. And uh, it's the King of Spades. The Frost Shepherds have arrived. The mysterious Frost Shepherds, which... Um, See you later. Skis, thank you for dropping in. Really appreciate Thanks, it. Skis. Thank you, and thank you for your input and stuff. Really like that. Thank you. We what? I think it's just about to come to an end because the Frost Shepherds have arrived, which is the end of the game. But thank you. Um, the Frost Shepherds are supposed to be purposefully vague. But what were they? I like to think they maybe... Maybe the steam robots were just the smaller, the smaller enemy. <laughs> Yeah. Or maybe. I don't know, because it's, it's winter. The Frost Shepherds, it could, it, could, it could be natural, couldn't it? It could be anything, really. I like to think the volcano. Yeah, the Thrush Shepherds. <laughs> the volcano has erupted. And that's, that's us done. That's you done. The Frost Shepherd is a metaphor, yeah, for the for something in the volcano. I like it. <laughs> oh, we were doing so well. We planned so well. And the Frost Shepherds have arrived. Yeah, I think it went okay. We had a few setbacks. We traded some stuff off. Yeah. We made some friends. We made some evil magicians. Maybe maybe the journey was the friends we made along the way. And for those that are watching, that, so that was a game of it, but that was a short game. We There was 20 cards we didn't play with here. <laughs> we, we played, um, it goes, it can go up to like four hours long, apparently. But generally yeah. you'd play it sat around the table with a big, you know, like a big, bit of paper and all sorts of fun bits and pieces and interaction. I think it went okay on the screen. I'm hoping people saw it okay. Um, Cause I was able to click in and out of the picture. So it was you and, but hopefully I know on the phone it was, it would have been small, but thank you people for hanging out. We appreciate it. It's always. Yeah. It's been good fun. It's been good fun. And I very much like the game. It's nice. I do like the game. I think there'd be a bit more, um, Contempt if there were more people, perhaps. I think that maybe that would have come into it a bit more. Maybe we'd have shown a bit more contempt for some of the situations. I think we just. I don't feel as though we needed to. I think we're just too agreeable with each other anyway, Ewan, because we're used to role playing on the same team. Yeah, 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 that is true. And I think it was a good uh, it's a good advertisement, a good manifesto for our post apocalyptic <laughs> settlement. If anyone out there wants yeah. to vote. Yeah. Vote for us. Vote for us. Join we our promise commune. magicians and <laughs> mud spas and <laughs> mud spas and soap. All yeah. the things you can ever need. No wood though. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you join us just as our town got erupted onto. We were doing so so well. We'd we'd fought off the uh, robots. We'd, um, we'd we'd enjoyed a juggler. No, not a juggler, a magician. But I, re I really enjoyed it, and I'd be willing to play that again sometime, you know, maybe grab a couple of extra people in if they wanted to. Yeah, yeah, And, yeah, and build on that contempt. I think that'd be good. That'd be good. Most definitely. It's a fun game. It's, a fun game. it's nice to uh, throw something out there and just come up with something random to, to go with it. It felt, you know, different to how we'd normally play. I don't know if that's accurate, but felt it. Yeah, exactly. I think um, it was nice. So if people want it, I think it's like five ninety nine for the PDF. Pounds, that is Canadian dollars. It's a tenner. That, 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 the guy's Canadian, I think. Um, you can buy it in a very nice bag for about $30, I think, with all the cards and little skulls for the contempt tokens and things. So it's really a, it's a nice thing. Um, but yeah, PDF is available. And uh, I think we should, if anyone ever wants to play it with us, we should play it again at some point. Give it a while. And I think... Someone that's more contemptuous of us should play. Someone, someone that hates us a little bit to yeah, add to yeah, better the yeah. invite. Him. So that, you know, there's many of you. There's got to be someone out there on the internet. <laughs> exactly. Finds us in contempt. <laughs> you, you are super contentious. Uh, speaking, actually, of um, con content for each other. Contempt. So this is the problem. <laughs> I'm not content. I'm contempt. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of content, yeah, that would be content. Like <laughs> speaking of me speaking of being contempt and contemptuous <laughs> of people, you and tomorrow we're playing a game um, where we might not all get along quite so well, and I'm blaming you for it. What are we playing? 
Uh, tomorrow we are playing a game called Everyone is John, uh, where everyone gets to play John. <laughs> Basically, John uh, John is a in the way we're playing it. John is a first generation Android AI um, with multiple personalities programming lines of uh, algorithms that you each get to represent, each with a goal, trying to achieve your goal as many times as possible, um, and scoring points each time you do so. Which uh, hopefully will be good fun and throw up some more mayhem and some unplanned shenanigans. I think the best bit I like about it is that, um, what did I read, that if, if nothing really happens, if no big things happen for like five or ten minutes, John just falls asleep and then just wakes yeah. up somewhere new. Which is yeah. great. He gets he gets bored and everyone else can vote or everyone else can bid to take control of John in whatever situation he wakes up in. But we don't know what situation he's waking up in until we've bid to take no. control of him. Oh, I see. Yeah. Pretty good. much. That's gonna be fun. So who have we got yeah. playing? We've got people playing that with us, haven't we? We have, we've got uh, Mr. Leno and ID Visions, ID Visions. Um, yeah, are going to join us. They're both, I'm not going to say any more because I don't want to give away their goals to you so you can sabotage them. Yeah, tell me all their goals, man. I'll, I'll tell you mine. <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll tell you mine if you tell me theirs. They're not watching at the minute. So, you know. I, I okay. know yours anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's true, you do know mine. Uh, uh, um, no! But there promises to be some, you know, some laughs and possibly some more contempt. Oh. Content. Either way, <laughs> one I, of them will happen. I finished with one contempt. I'm holding that contempt to you for tomorrow. I'm keeping hold of my one contempt. Um, yeah, so that's tomorrow. We'll start that from 11 o'clock UK time, just because it suits life, our life, really. I know it's late for the Brits, but it is what it is, really. We've both got kids and things, and I've got band practice on Friday. And so, you know, we do it when we can. And we like to keep our uh, American and can Canadian mega fans happy. You know. And all the Brits we know that follow us are quite night owls. So it works for everyone. Really. 11 o'clock tomorrow, Friday. Yeah. Ewan is the man. He is the he is John, basically. I think. <laughs> you, are, you are John. I'll tell you where John is. <laughs> I get to be John. I get to be part of John. Not all of John. Yeah. I'll drink to that spare room. Uh, so thank you everyone so much that um, watched, who's still here, who watched a tiny bit, a chunk of it, or all of it. I hope you enjoyed the journey. I thought it was a fun journey. Things changed, and I felt like we told a story. Yeah, definitely. It's all about Juan. You and his journey. Exactly. Good link. That's a very good point. Juan, that's why I chose it. Um, maybe maybe we'll just play that and I'll just be John and you three <laughs> so can just sit there and listen to me for a few hours that'd, make, that'd be nice I'd enjoy that um, Fiddles have you got the Discord we're going to we're going to uh, finish the stream now I'll probably get a cup of tea and pop onto Discord for a bit you and have you got work tomorrow yeah I'm up in four-ish hours yes. so I probably won't so you and me go to bed sorry guys <laughs> tomorrow though tomorrow I'll uh it's the weekend, so I'm a bit more free. Magic. Well, go to bed. Thank you so much, Ewan, for everything you did tonight. There is our Discord. Thank you. Thank you for sorting out Excellent. the technology and everything. And I'll have a lovely work day tomorrow. Same to everyone else. And yes. I'll see you tomorrow. And thank you, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow, too. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, Fiddles. Thanks, thank you, everyone. Farewell.